there's nothing that can beat the real thing. So when you go up and you take a huge solid piece of mild steel uh, that you just know is several tons worth of weight to it, but you put your hand on it, that there's something that reverberates straight back to you. We use a lot of different metals. We're not necessarily stuck to any one particular kind, but we work a lot with aluminium, steel, and also bronze. I think one of the earliest pieces we did in metal were the hurricane mirrors in aluminium, sheet aluminium, which we really enjoyed working with because it's malleable enough to create with your own hands. You don't have to rely on any equipment or heat or tools. You can just work with your hands. So you can really relate and react with and to the material as you're making a sculptural piece. There's quirks and frustrations as well as the things that you adore. Maybe the quirks and the frustrations has to be there for you in order to adore it. <laughs> but often the quirks and frustrations of normal metal work are things that we turn into something that we adore. If I think particularly about patination, that rust, aging of metals, you know, a lot of people will fight against processes to stop bronze from darkening, to stop steel from rusting. But we encourage these things as part of the nature of the material. And the weight of metal, again, is often something that's considered a problem, but for us it can be turned into something very special within the piece. If you pick up a small candlestick and it weighs five kilos, there's something great about that. It, it's weighty, it has gravitas, it's, it's a true solid object. I think it's a very healthy thing for, for oneself to, to actually work with the material itself. We are there when they demold it and we have our input with, with the craft people throughout the process. But even when we make works in bronze, we will have handmade the thing that's being cast. So we will work in clay, uh, sometimes cardboard or found materials to create the original. So we're still very much part of the process in terms of hand making things, even with the steel work, for example. So steel is too tough um, to be able to work by hand. So you need to have skilled craftspeople who have the knowledge to use tools to form it the way you want to, but we will be there. It's important that we understand the whole process when other people are making our pieces in metal. One of the first pieces also we made was a, a high back chair called the Berger, where we worked with people who uh, hand beat prototype cars. They work on the Jaguars and Aston Martins to hand beat them. And it's vital that we go and see what they do, what skills they have. Um, to ensure that it's going to work for what we're doing, but also to create pieces that can make use of those skills, skills that have been passed down for generations through apprenticeships, and it's important to keep that alive for us. The pieces behind me are the Hurricane Mirror uh, and also Console, and this is a very different way of working with metal. This is completely hands-on only. We, we don't use any tools, we don't even wear anything kind of protective we just use our hands to form the metal it's in a way the opposite of way of working than when we cast the work the cast the work we have a lot of control of what the final outcome is going to be the hurricanes it's it's on the other side of the spectrum it's what we're doing when we start to form them we're creating almost a consequence that we need to react to and you have an idea of where you want it to go, but what's important is that the metal also has it, the idea of what it wants to do. You can't tell it what to do too much. You can put it in a Georgian library and it works, or in a contemporary space like this, and it still works because it takes on its environment. And at the same time, it reflects light back um, in an abstract way, almost smoke-like way around the room. And it's essentially like painting with light. And so by moving lighting or light and moving during the day, it changes its environment in so many different ways. Also important as a kind of, the fact that we call it a mirror, because people will say, but I can't see myself in it. But we're very interested in the 18th century about reflecting light into a room. That was the purpose of a mirror, which is exactly what this does. It's great to have these processes which are thousands of years old, which just can't be done in another way. It has to be done in that way. And um, spiritually, in terms of gold and silver, there's just something inherent in our nature as human beings which draws us to this. It's a primeval instinct. The hybrid day works are typical of what we do when we transfer between what we call the analog and the digital. Um, 
traditional handcraft techniques and contemporary technology. With the Hyberdeo pieces, we started with the oldest form of making that there is really for mankind, making things out of clay, putting your hands in mud and making objects. And we made hundreds and hundreds of tiny vessels instantaneously where we just pulled the clay out of the bag so it had stretch marks within the clay, stuck our fingers in so it had our fingerprints in it. Then we went to higher to technology, the, the cutting edge of 3D scanning, to uh, 3D scan them in the highest possible resolution. Then they were taken and carved by a robot in a much, much larger scale. Um, and the robot leaves lines where it has like a drill tool that goes around a piece of foam. And normally you polish those away, but we left those because we had our fingerprint, then the fingerprint of technology. Then we went back in time again to lost wax bronze casting and cast them in white bronze, but in large, so you can see these big fingerprints and the stretches of the, the clay and the way that it forms, but frozen in white bronze, which is a beautiful material. It's like a warm silver and it ages very slowly and very beautifully. 20 years ago, uh, studies and research that we've done still today sits as almost like a red thread through the work that we do that you can't really push it in a way it doesn't want to do and then so many of these things as well with the technology today that you can you, you scan them in you have them on your screen and of course that m means that you can manipulate them in any way that you want but the moment you start to push and pull it, 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 it doesn't work it's, it's almost like every kink in every surface and fold has a relationship to each other. It's the, the, it's the strangest thing. And I think this authenticity of materials, particularly in design, is an inevitable outcome of modernism. Um, we have nothing against modernism, but it's all about this strict control of everything and just powering everything down to what the purpose of this object is rather than what it feels like, what it's, where its heart is, what the material is and where it comes from and its history. And, and it's natural, I think, that we want to be more expressive um, and honest uh, and true to materials.